welcome Ketsu Susan Pasquan, who is an educator and a collector of traditional knowledge. She's here this evening to talk to us about the Naka language through bird songs. This is part of a year-long series of educational and interactive activities celebrating Indigenous languages, specifically Alaska Native languages. It's a collaborative effort between the Morris Thompson Center, Doyon Foundation, Tanana Chiefs Conference Cultural Programs, the Naka Naga, and the University of Alaska's Alaska Native Language Center. So we'll be having monthly events throughout the year, including language introductions like this one, learning activities for children and their, their parents or caregivers, and a film festival later on in the year. So please come back to the Morris Thompson website to, to check out information about those events as it becomes available. And tonight we're live streaming, so hello to everybody who's with us on Facebook. Uh, feel free to leave comments. It's our first time live streaming, so we'll do our best to try and um, get some of your questions to Susan at the end of the presentation. Susan, thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Bassi, Sarah, nice to meet you. And Bassi to Steve, um, sound engineer, getting everything running. Uh, Bassi in Danaga means thank you. Um, I'd like to give appreciation first um, to our first people of the land, not only here in Alaska, but all over um, the world, our language warriors out there who are working, to um, the fluent speakers to teach it to us so that we can share our knowledge. Um, there's many people all over the world that have a close harmony with the land. And this is just a small slice of that. Um, I'd like to give appreciation to the Alaska Native Language Center. Uh, my mom worked up there for 20 years and um, a lot of this knowledge that I have is uh, from what she shared through all of her work, working with elders all over Alaska. And that's part of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, where I'm alumni. I see Sue there, part of my education. Danakanaga elders, they are based here in Fairbanks. They represent the elders of the 43 tribes within the Tana Chiefs Conference. And um, they also, they're housed here in this building. They also have a lot of... Um, valuable resources, cultural knowledge, but firsthand just talking to our elders and learning directly from them. So you're welcome to visit their office here at the Morris Thompson Culture and Visitor Center. Doyon Foundation, um, I see Alan here, and we've been busy uh, this past year working on um, projects to make our language available via uh, transparent language online so look forward to that coming out from Doyon Foundation some good exercises um, the Morris Thompson Culture and Visitor Center I worked at um, Doyon Foundation many years ago when this building was just a thought I worked under uh, many of the presidents at Doyon Limited one of them was the late Morris Thompson and um, I'm Happy to see that this building uh, carries on that tradition of sharing our culture. Um, if you haven't had a chance to visit the museum, it's a wonderful place. Many um, different aspects of our culture are um, available through the artifacts and listening to the um, feeds on the muse at the museum. Also to the Tanana Chiefs Conference. They are the nonprofit arm of the Doyon Limited region, so they represent 43 tribes. Um, they have social services. Uh, I worked in realty for many years and traveled for many years around TCC region, meeting our elders, um, working to save their native allotments and restricted town sites. Um, and I'd, lastly, I'd like to thank all of you here in the audience um, and just Glad that all of you are able to, to be here and, and learn a little bit about um, birds. It's one of, you know, one of my favorite things. Um, I'd also like to thank the people, Facebook Live, 
I have friends who've been messaging me or uh, tagging me. A couple of years ago, they had this thing called Kolang, and there were literally speakers from around the world who came here to Fairbanks to learn our, about language documentation. And so they're chiming in. Anyway, so I'll get started. I'll do an introduction of myself in the Naga. And, um, but before that, I just want to, I have to pray before I, I do something like this. Today was a hard day, so I really need the prayers. Um, so I'm just going to, to pray. Pray for those uh, families out there who are facing challenges. Pray for their pray for their friends and all those who will be traveling. Um, pray for any family members or any of you who need special prayers um, now and in the days to come. Uh, Susan Paskvan, Suuza Dehund Naga Hart Kitsu Sisni. No is Sietledoy Steve Paskvan, my husband Steve Paskvan. In uh, Eliza Jones, Uza, Ita, uh, Benedict Jones, Uza, Minil Rads, Dahads, a dad and splits, oh, Fairbanks, Lista, Yukon, Koikuk School District, Aka Gonsini, Denaga Hadaka, Digger Air, Dehun, Denaga Hadak, Ochtel Air. My name is Susan Paskvan. My husband is Steve Paskvan and Kiel Natich Nahulan, Jason Yesh, Adam Yesh, Haba Uza. We have two, two children, Jason and Adam Paskvan. Uh, my, my parents are Benedict and Eliza Jones from Kaikuk. It's a village that's about 250 miles directly west of here. It's about 80 people there. Um, and I work at Yukon Kaikuk School District. I'm the native language coordinator. And um, I'm learning our language while I'm teaching our language. So I, the more I learn in our language, the more I realize I don't know. There's so much about our language. <laughs> anyway, I'll go ahead and get started with the presentation. Oh, oh, I forgot to recognize 2019 is the International Year of Indigenous Languages. That's an awesome proclamation. This is around the world. I even have one friend um, who's working to preserve the Gaelic languages. So any, any language in the world, um, you know, which faces the more commonly spoken languages, you know, those are endangered languages. So want to recognize that. And this presentation is Denaga Gaelic and Denaga is our word for our language. Dana means the people and Gah is like. So Denaga and Gaelic means songs. It's commonly known as the Koyukon Athabascan language. Um, but we're kind of in a sovereignty movement. We're trying to go say all Denaga. Um, so when you hear that, that's what I'm referring to. So just like to recognize um, our school district, Yukon Koikuk School District. Tell you a little about, about that. Tonight we're going to talk about the people and the lands. Uh, we have many different type of songs. We have animal and bird songs, so that's what we'll talk about tonight. Um, we have teaching songs, so when we're teaching languages, we uh, create our songs for um, students who are young and students, you know, who are older, who through songs, people learn languages. And I'll also talk about um, something that's uh, very, our strongest tradition is um, holding on to songs for our memorial potlatches. 
and I'll just briefly mention those. So this is the um, map by the Doyon Foundation, and these are the languages that are spoken in Alaska um, for the Athabascan languages. And so Denaga is right there in the middle. Um, so we're interior, and we're surrounded by um, Holigachuk to the south, Deghanag a little bit further south, and then um, Denaki, Upper Kuskokwim languages, that's like Nikolai, Nikolai Talida, um, Benti Hatana Kanaga, I see Vera here. Um, that is the language of the Minto and Ninana people, and Dinjiju, uh, Kia, Gwich'in, uh, Han language, and I'm not too sure how to say the Tanna cross, and also the Ni, Ni Upper Tanna, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced those. So uh, language uh, is uh, something that's spoken and it's mutually intelligible between people who all speak that. And then within a language, you have dialects. Um, so it's like a variation of that same language. So in Danaga, we have three dialects. We have, um, I'm from Kaikuk, so ours is the center, central dialect. And 18 miles below us is um, Nulato, and they're the lower dialect. So we have some sound changes. So this presentation is going to be given in the central dialect. Um, but when I'm teaching, I'm teaching all three dialects of our language and attempting the Benti Hatana Kanaga, but I rely a lot on um, the speakers of that language to help me with that. So this is um, our school district. We have 10 schools within our district. Our schools are uh, small. We are spread out over the size of the state of Washington. And uh, only two of our villages you can drive into, Minto and Manly, all the other villages we have to fly into. So to teach our language, um, I teach over two-way video conference. So I see the students live and they can talk back to me. So those of you in the um, uh, technology world, it's kind of like having Facebook, what do they call that? Not Messenger. <laughs> Anyway, where you could talk to somebody. So that's the teaching that um, we have. I'm very grateful for our uh, speakers out in those villages who have um, helped me and who continue to help in the schools teaching our languages. The students are just all excited about uh, learning. And one of the songs that we sing, sing tonight will be one of the ones that uh, they just love to sing this springtime. Okay. I'd like to um, acknowledge that this, these stories, these songs, they come back from um, what the elders have passed down to us. This is my late uncle, Bill Williams of Hughes, and we were on a boat trip from Kaikuk to Huslia, and we had elders, scientists, youth, um, and we traveled all the way from Kaikuk to Hughes, and we stopped at many different places that had um, Denaga place names. So this was a trip there, and here we were cooking breakfast and having coffee in the morning. And I want to acknowledge um, uh, late Uncle Bill because when we started learning our language, him and um, his wife, Sabadza, Madeline Williams, they were always there. And to listen to him tell stories, it was like one time he said he wanted to tell us about birds. So we went over to the, um, to the, I don't remember what it's called, over by uh, Creamer's Field, the local Audubon. Um, anyway, we went over there and he just started talking about the birds and Somebody would mention something and he said, oh, yeah, that's the one that comes up and goes down like this. And then he just knew a story just like that. And then the other elders, because we had elders from many different villages, 
they would somebody he would sing a song and then somebody says oh yeah this is the way we sing it and so all of these have different variations and um he also shared with us you know the place names all along this trip and just uh um this is just one picture of one elder there's just so many elders out there that have really helped us in addition to that, you know, the scientists on the trip, I don't know if um, Karen Bedoni is here, but um, she was a valuable resource on the indigenous plants. Um, and you'll see pictures by Paul Applebeck, my friend I made, that um, he's a wonderful photographer. Paul, if you're listening, this is for you. It's like, um, oh, of course, I, then I show a picture that Paul didn't take. <laughs> um, so this, our first one, um, we'll go right into the birds. This is up here, it says Ginigani. And that means, what is this? So all of you can ask me, Ginigani. And I will say, Gais del Dula. Okay. So when I go like this, that means ask me again. Gais del Dula. Gais del Dula. Guys, Kitlin Tsahat Anna. Kitlin Tsahat Anna. And uh, when I get, right now we'll just go over the names, but when I go into the, um, each of the birds, I'll talk about them a little bit more. Okay. Kitlin Tsahat Anna. Kitlin Tsahat Anna. Now I'm going to ask you. Ginigani. Aha, This is American Sign Language. I hope I don't goof it up. Ginigani. Aha. Ginigani. Aha. Aratalka. Delkahu. 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 And I don't know if it shows up real well, but um, this is the Robin Redbreast. Beautiful photos by Paul Applebeck out of Galena. Oh, Ginigani. Aha. Ginigani. 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 It, oh, you, you can ask me. Kitlin Zachat Anna. Ginigani. Aha, Arata. Arata, Arata. Zachka. Dilkahu. Ginigani. Klit Kalroy. Klit Kalroy. Klit Kalroy. Klit Kalroy. So, as you can see, there's some sounds in Danaga that we don't have in English. So the TL is a one of our many um, sound constant clusters. Klit kalroi. Ginigani. Ooh, aha. Ginigani. <laughs> Great password. <laughs> Ginigani. Mm 
Can you go on? Took L. Took L. I guess I forgot after Ginigani at the top. Got tired of it. <laughs> Ginigani. Took L. Uh huh. Took L. And I couldn't uh, find a picture of a fox sparrow that I could steal today, so I took one from Paul's page. This is a Lincoln sparrow. When we get to the song, um, they. Uh, weren't too sure what bird sang it. They were thinking it was a fox sparrow, but there was a question mark on it. it maybe it could have been a ruby crowned kinglet. Oh, gee, I have a typo. Or a yellow warbler. Let's just bypass that one. Okay. Guinea Gani. Let Kagoi. Aha, Arataka. So um, some sounds like that KK. The reason it's a double K, so um, you have a regular K. Uh, let me see, like look, okay, look. So as part of being a language learner and part of being a lang uh, linguist is you kind of realize where your tongue is in your mouth and where the sounds, what shape it's in. If it's like k k k, kind of put that and figure out where that. Where's your tongue? Is it hidden up here, out here? K. And when it's a it's a double K, then that means it's your tongue is coming up back here. Kagoi. Kagoi. Uh-huh. Kagoi. And so that barred you, which we don't have in English, is um kind of a little bit deeper U than a regular U. So that's why it's a barred U. And the G H is a Klit Kagoi. Okay. Ginigani. Suk al. Uh huh. So we have what's called a glottal stop. Um, so we have um, maybe about six or eight letters that have a glottal stop, which is that K apostrophe. So it makes that k, k, k sound. Suk al. Suk al. Mm -hmm. So, um, my Denaga name means Ketsu, Ketsu, and it means someone's grandmother. So, that's why um, you'll hear that, it, that same popping, Ke. Okay, you all ready for this? <laughs> I thought about being... Uh, um, being tricky and not putting the words up there, but part of this, <laughs> part of this language teaching is um, I, I learned from many different language teachers and there is um, um, teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. Um, it's by Blaine Ray and my sister-in-law, Betsy. Shout out to Betsy if you're listening. Um, I went to a workshop with her, and one thing that they taught was comprehensible input. So you give your students as much input as possible so they're not struggling um, on learning. So decided to go nice on you guys. <laughs> okay, so let's review them again. Dildula. Zahka. Kitlin Anna. Klit kogoi, delk ohu, tsuk al. Oh, and I put a question just because I, we weren't too sure what bird that was, but it doesn't have a question mark when we say it. Okay. Tsuk <laughs> al. <laughs> okay, so this, um, well, let me, while we're taking, I'll go back one step. All right. So I'll tell you a little bit of, about the um, our beliefs. We our beliefs come from the time long ago called Gadon Sydney times, and it means um, um, it was said. So Gadon Sydney times is a, a legendary time a long time ago when animals and people. Um, fish, they could all talk to each other as much the way that, that we communicate today. And so all of our 
um, traditional stories, our songs, the way that we interact with nature, the way that um, our beliefs today, they all stem back to that Gadon Sydney times. And so these Gadon Sydney times, it's very much uh, a part of who we are as Native people. Um, and so the way that some of the stories about the birds and animals, they get their characteristics from going back to that time. And as we go through this, I'll tell you a little bit about some of those. Um, during the Gadon Sydney times, all the animals, um, all the birds had gathered outside. Um, for those of you not in Alaska, outside, we, outside means um, lower 48, down that way. <laughs> um, they had gathered down there, and this is stories that um, late Uncle Bill had shared with us. He said they had all gathered and they had a big meeting and they said, who's going to uh, lead us back to Alaska? And so the birds, they had um, chiefs and one of them said that he was going to lead the birds back. And that was Talila, the eagle. So they had started up and the eagle, Talila, um, turned out to be not a very friendly pilot. And so it was like foretelling, and that's a way of things that happen then kind of foreshadow what happens later. So it was like a prophecy for some, from a story of an eagle being a not very nice pilot to us having airplanes today. And sometimes we run into airlines or pilots who are not, not very nice, you know, hurry up, load up, get off the plane if I left you behind too bad. So... <laughs> So the next bird um, that said, they said, okay, that isn't working. So who else is going to be our leader? And so uh, Del Dula stepped up and Del Dula said that um, he will lead the birds back to Alaska. And so he started up and um, he turned out to be a very friendly pilot. And so when the cranes come up, then he also travels with the Ketlen Zahat Anna. Does it, you guys remember what Ketlen Zahat Anna is? Uh, uh -huh, white crowned sparrow. Yep, so when they come up, you watch for that. They'll come together. Anyway, during this Gadon Sydney times, when all the birds were um, had this meeting and they were coming up, but before they left, they said, okay, we have to decide... Um, which of you are going to be water birds to Gaga? And so there were some birds that spoke up, the pintails, um, the ducks, and they said they were going to be uh, water birds. And they said, who's going to be um, uh, the land birds? And so some other birds stepped up. And then who's going to be the song birds? And then there were other birds. So each of these type of birds going back long ago, they um, had decided way back in the Gadon Zidni times of who was going to be a type of bird and what kind of land that they were going to live on. And so today um, we'll share a little bit about those Gadon Zidni stories. And um, when I'm sharing these stories, you know, I'm learning. So I do apologize if I make any, any mistakes or um, if I say something that's wrong, anybody can correct me out there. Say, okay. So this is um, De La Dule. This was taught to us by um, Sitsu Raila, Zayinik Ilna, Jenny Huntington of Koyakuk. She lived um, when we were kids growing up. She lived two houses upriver from us, and then when. Um, people moved back town in Kaikuk. She lived um, next door to us. And, um, okay, I think I'll just sing it. Do you know this one? Oh, okay. So I'm going to, is it okay if I move over this way? Okay. De la dule, de la dule, de la dule. Nan ya adi nikh nat ho o, we can't 
So that's the <laughs> that's the um, Del Dula song, and this is a love song. And um, so the crane told his friend, and in our our language, uh, so when you're talking about somebody, you talk about how they're in relation to your age. So we have, um, you know, he was flirting with his his friend, a girl. But she was younger, so our word for younger sister is sedadza. Okay, so that's the word that you see here. And yaza is like a term of affection. It means small, um, but it's also used as my, like my precious younger sister, sedadza yose. And so the crane told the, um, the other one, with your long legs, reach out over there and, and touch that girl. And then, so when you go, when the cranes start arriving here in Fairbanks and you go to the creamer's field, you can sing to the cranes and they'll, they'll um, get up there and they'll dance for you. Sorry, I've got weak ankles. <laughs> um, so let's, see. I'll sing it one more time and then I'll see if, uh, I, I'm not a very good singer. I'm really sorry. I don't sing on pitch or whatever. <laughs> anyway. De la doule, de la doule, de la doule. Nanya adi ni thas ho, not odd in rain letis. Becan at lights and on ni fleet, the sedadze yose. De la doule, de la doule. Okay, now it's your turn. So you guys have to be ready to stand up so you can move in the aisles if you want to and make sure that you um, do the crane dance, okay? What's one? This one? Okay. Beka Netlai. Sa, no, nis, lit. This is the way I teach my kids on these long words. Sa, no, nis, lit. Sa, no, nis, lit. Sa, no, nis, lit. So you just break it down to the syllables. Okay. Say, Bekan at lights and on neatly, says it as a yose. All right, you guys ready? All right, Daga. De la do lay, de la do lay, de la do lay. Nanya adi nisnas ho, not odd in rain letis. Becan at lights and on neatly, the sedate yose. De la do lay, de la do lay, de la do lay. <laughs> you got it, Sophia? <laughs> so, uh, late aunt, aunt um, Cassie Saunders had taught us that song as well. She recorded a tape for uh, my sister in Eugene, Oregon. Shout out to Sada Cora and Go Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she made a tape for uh, my sister Cora, so that's available at the Alaska Native Language Archives if you ever want to download it. Okay. So the um, Del Dula, it, um, he agreed to become the friendly pilot and 
on that long journey, um, the Eklinza Hatana, he had, um, he went on a long journey and he had dentalium shells. And I forgot I was going to put a picture of dentalia on here, but I'm sure if I send you on a scavenger hunt out to the museum or somewhere in here, somebody would be able to identify dentalia. Um, it's a long shell and it's um, found at near the Queen Charlotte Islands. And so it was a valuable trade bead. And so he had um, carried it on the top of his head and um, he didn't have enough food and the river broke up and he couldn't uh, cross it to get home. So he put the dentalia on his head and he broke his leg and he couldn't fly. So Del Dula agreed to bring him back to Alaska and he died before he made it home. And so he put these words to song so the people knew that he wasn't coming back. And he was up on a tree branch looking at his camp. And he said, hey, and then you could hear the, um, this is the song he sings. Do any of you recognize that song? So you'll listen for that this coming spring. Oh, is there? Hadi. Oh, okay. So those of you, okay. So those of you that are in the audience here, you can see right here at the bottom, these are dentalium shells. It always, uh, I always like these kind of birds. Well, I like them all. Huh? They did come back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is the Zahka gray jay. Um, so anytime that we're, we're working on fish or working on moose meat, the Zahka come around. And um, my mom, she always puts out some, some fat out there for it. Or even all winter, whatever scraps she has, she'll put it out there. And so it sings, get um, get get Oh, hey, I forgot to give you guys a test on this other one. <laughs> okay. Okay, go. Oh, Huzun. Huzun's a duckly. You all sing pretty good. Okay. At least. At least. Now we say it a little slower. You're looking at me. <laughs> okay, so this ke is the one that I talked about earlier. And then this combination, kle, and then the yh, and then uh -huh. And so she's scraping something. At least, at least. Okay, your turn. Nin, nin hoon. <laughs> Somebody got it. <laughs> so that's the zahka. Um, so this is Tzuk Al, and we weren't too sure what, what bird it was. So remember I told you how the, um, during Gadon Sydney times, the, uh, the birds and the animals they had um, were able to talk to each other and they had relationships and you know just how you know we have our families and we have um, conflict and stuff so at, as it was during Gadon Sydney times so um, the young fox sparrow was married and her and her husband were living in a camp and he had gone off to go hunting and the old woman had fallen off, fallen in love with the husband. He was a very good provider. So while 
um, he was out hunting, she took an awl, which is a narrow tool that you use like for poking holes like in birch bark basket. Um, and she, she took it and she uh, poked it, killed the fox sparrow by um, poking it in its ear. And so she died and she became a bird. And when the husband came home, this little bird landed on his shoulder and see, um, sang, Sitsu, Sitsi, Hadagashka Gayits, Sitsu, Sitsi, Hadagashka Gayits. And so it means Grandma broke a needle in my ear. Yeah. Sitsu, Sitsi, Hashtagatla Gayits. Uh huh. Hashtag. Radla, uh huh. Hashtag Radla, uh huh. Ray eats. Oh, I wonder if I'm missing an E at the end. Am I missing a me at, at the end, Joe? Okay, I am missing an E at the end. This is supposed to be a double E. Joe learns our language as well back there. Um, and he put together some nice pages with um, using information from. Uh, Richard Nelson, who lived in Huslia and um, Hughes, and he wrote a book, and there's also a movie out there, Make Prayers to the Raven. And he had interviewed um, late uh, Aunt Catherine Atla and late Uncle Stephen Atla. Um, and so they sang many of these stories as well. And Joe's learned our language. I'm very proud of him for that. And so... Um, I just knew I would find one typo. Should have raised your hand, Joe. <laughs> okay. Sitsu, sitsi. Oh, I do say I do have two typos. Sitsu, sitsi. Hashtagat la gayits. Sitsu, sitsi. Hashtagat la gayits. Uh huh. So this is uh, my grandma. This is my ear. And hashtagadla must be the word for a poking din. I'm not in. Gayits uh, is she, she, inside. Sitsu, sitsi, hashtagadla gayits. Want to try it? Oh, aha. <laughs> Oh, this one, you'll like this one. <laughs> okay. This is um, Del Cahu, which is the robin redbreast. And in lower dialect, they say Del Cuha. And so that is in Nulado and Caltag. And in the upper dialect, which is Tanana, Rampart, Stevens Village, Beaver, Manly Hot Springs, they say Del Cahu. So you see how the dialects change a little bit. Um, so the way from the Gedanzidni times, we don't know which um, brother-in-law, what bird, or it couldn't even, it didn't even have to be a bird. Um, so in, in the science, you know, you have your, your birds um, are in the bird family, you have your mammals, and then you have your um, fish, and then you have small mammals. So they're all in these categories, scientific categories. But during Gedanzidni times, um, animals could be of different... Uh, they could call, like, for example, during a Taban Atzach story, which is a story of a porcupine. The um, grandma porcupine, she called the, um, the bear, she called that her cousin. Okay, so they don't have to be in the same scientific family. And so this, this story behind this one has been lost, but um, we have the words today. And I'll sing it and then um, I'll go through it. Uh, it goes, Doro Selen Ulkoit Siga Tilzut Sitli Sitli Doro Selen Ulkoit Siga Tilzut Sitli Sitli. <laughs> so it means um, 
This is Dada down the river around the bend. Selen, my brother-in-law. Uh huh. Ulkoi, which is pike, and Tsiga. Oh, I must be missing a glottal there. Tsiga is its guts. Tilzut is to slurp it up. That's like, doesn't that sound like an onomatopoetic word? Tilzut, til. And some, some variations have tilzut twice, and there's also a word tilzuk. Okay, so with the variations that people have, you might hear um, Dora, Selin, Gulkoit, Siga, Tilzut, Tilzut, Sikni, Sikni. So there's different variations, or you might hear Dora, Selin, Gulkoit, Siga, Tilzuk, Tilzuk, Sikni, Sikni, Hi, 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 Hi. Um, Sikni is, uh, he told me. He told me and he thought that was funny, so they got to put the hee hee in there. <laughs> and so um, my parents have told me and a lot of the elders have told me that uh, the robin is losing its song. It's only singing part of it. Anybody venture to guess why a bird might lo be losing part of its song? That very well could be. So maybe people aren't speaking their language as much. So maybe it's learning, it's losing its language. Then that's exactly what people theorize. Um, just like our languages are being endangered. So um, it's only singing part of its song. So it's important for us to, to do everything we can to learn our language and support those who are also learning and documenting our language. Okay, so we'll go through this slow. Da da, selen, ulkoi, tiga, tilzut, sifni, sifni. Did anybody have any trouble with this? It's a barred L, and this is the way I teach my students how to say it. So um, put your tongue up there where the L is. Uh, uh, and now we're going to put a vowel on each side. Leave your, let's be conscious of where your L is on your, the back of your alveolar ridge. So we're going to put an A. Uh, Allah, Allah, Allah. And now this time you're going to let air come out one side when you do the uh, bardel. Asla, 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 asla. Mm -hmm. So, sithni, sithni, sithni. Mm -hmm. Did that help any of you? Okay, good. You're learning some teaching techniques. All right, here we go again. Dara selen. Ulkoi tsiga, tilzut, sifni, sifni. So we sing it twice and then we do the hee hee. So pretend you don't see that one, okay? Dara selen, ulkoi tsiga, tilzut, sifni, sifni, hee 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 hee. Now you can do it. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, it's your turn. Oh, <laughs> so that's the delta who and it always makes people happy when they hear them coming back for the first time it's like spring is Arriving, summer's arriving. And this one is a summer bird, San Gaga. Uh, San means summer and Gaga uh, could refer to an animal. Um, there's some animals that we don't say its name. Um, so we, we can say Gaga. And so this is just, I don't know what bird it is. Um, but it has a cute little song which says, San Gaga Dolito. San, oh, San Gaga Dolito. 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 San Gaga Dolito. Sitsikidili. 
Sen ga ga do li do do li do do li do. Sen ga ga do li do. Sits e kiddily or kiddily. Yeah, you sing to me. So um, this is a picture, I believe, of a yellow warbler. Warbler. Um, that's a pretty, a pretty bird. Uh, when we see yellow birds in the summertime, we call that lucky birds. Uh, um, much of our interaction with nature depends on our luck. Um, so the way that we um, work in harmony with it, nature is to be respectful to the birds, to the fish. And so many of our traditions, like when people go out hunting, we don't say um, that we're going to go out hunting. We refer to it as like, oh, we're going to go look around or we're going to go for a ride. And people in the village will know that, you know, you're going to go out, look around for some animals. And if that animal gives itself to you, then you have luck. And so um, uh, yellow bird is a, uh, I don't know why it's a lucky bird, but when we see it, it's like, oh, there's a lucky bird. Okay, this last one doesn't have a, a song with it, but I'll just uh, share a short story with you. It's Klitschkoroich, and Klitschkoroich, it's the mallard. And during the Gadon Sydney times, the males were always prettier. And um, when all the birds were ready to come be come back to Alaska from outside, uh, their wives made them pretty clothes for them. And before they leave, they change colors. And so when they come back, they're very pretty. And as you can see on the Klitschkoroich, it has four to five curly feathers on its tail. And so um, I remember growing up, uh, the men had these nice black hats with a little white bow, and then they would have the, the um, feathers from the Klitschkoroich. Do any of you remember seeing elders? Yep. Yeah, so they had that on there, um, and that they were dressed very nicely. Our uh, the women, you know, our grandmas, they were very good seamstresses. They their clothing before contact was all from the land, and so they learned how to sew um, very intricately. And if you visit the museum, you might see some parkas that have some really nice intricate work. Okay, this is just a, an example of a teaching song. Um, this one came, uh, we uh, took it to um, Beth Leonard, I don't know if you're listening, but she shared it with us. And so we translated Madeline Williams, who still works in our school uh, in Hughes, she helped me translate it back into um, English. And so Nog and na, nog and na duck means the birds came back, and this ke here is uh, indefinite for something. But then when we put uh, name the bird in there, like the geese came back, it's in a na na duck. And so when we're playing this game, we'll take a picture like all of the the um, birds at the beginning, and we'll put it on the floor, and then the kids will sit in a circle and they'll sing this song. Knock and a duck, knock and a duck, and then they'll pull a card out of the circle. And if they pulled up the, the geese, then they'd, they'd say, It's in non a duck, it's in a non a duck. If they pulled out the robin, they'll say, Delk uhu non a duck, delk uhu non a duck. And so then we can add in um, a type of different types of birds that have come back. Okay, so now I'm going to have you pull out your phones, those of you here or those of you um, out there in the Facebook world. We're going to play a game. It's called Kahoot, Kahoot It. Um, and so go ahead, Sarah. Oh, wait. Okay, so you're going to be directed to this website and okay sent gaga she's gonna load it up so you're gonna go to this website kahoot.it and you're going to put in this pin number
Okay, so we're waiting for players. And you type in your name. Oh, open oh, up. <laughs> Laughing Fox, I wonder who that is. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of people are joining. <laughs> Oh, I see Betsy out there. Probably Sue McHenry. Nayak. I probably know Nayak. Oh, Santa and Shagalup. Wait, hi, Shay. Santa. Oh, Elvina. Cool. All right, are we ready? Okay, so we go ahead and push start. Oh, no, not you guys, um, Sarah. <laughs> So then you choose triangle, circle, um, diamond, or square. Uh, here, what? Okay, so we had 14 people. Go ahead and hit next. Let's see who's the leader. Hit next. Okay, way to go, Nate, over there. <laughs> All right, next. Okay, and hit next. Oh, way to go, Nate and Julie, Ryan, Nayak, Debster. Next. <laughs> Your phone died. Oh, darn it. <laughs> you want my phone? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Zahka. Aha. Next. Oh, man. Six cats is catching up. So, Tsuk Al, Klit Koroi, Dildula, or Klin Zahat Anna. All over the place on that one. <laughs> Way to go, Nate. Del Kahu, Del Dula, Zahka, or Tuk Al. Oh, pretty good, you guys. Del Dula, next. <laughs> Del Kuhu, Tlil Koroi, Del Dula, or Zahka. Ooh, 
way to go. Last story. <laughs> All right, next. All right. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan passed you up. All right. Good job. Okay, so we'll go back to the PowerPoint. Um, wait, this one, Paige? Okay, so um, resources, if you're interested in more. Um, first and foremost, you can visit the elders. They have the Danakanaga Center here. Um, and then for online, if you have a scan thingy on your phone, you can scan um, the Benti and Danaga Internet re Resources. This is on Mukutu, which is like a digital archive. Um, and you can listen to sounds, videos on our language. Um, there's also transparent language online. This one is just a short version, but um, Nate and Alan with Doyon Foundation were working on some language apps. So this is an older version of that. So um, with that, that ends the presentation. And I probably just have a I'm sorry I talked so long. We just, we're out of time, but I'll take some questions. <laughs> so probably just five minutes of questions. Why do people think that the, why the is, is because of people not telling their stories about it? Yeah, so it's like um, they theorize that we're losing our language. So like um, t speaking it, and so they think that's why the robin is losing its song. Would you mind repeating the question so the online oh. can hear it? Oh, okay. So this young man had asked, why do we think the uh, robin is losing its voice or losing its song? And so they theorize that it's because we're losing our language that um, the robin is losing its song. Okay. Hi, Bart. In the Doyon region. Um, yeah, right, they're not in the Doyon region. Yeah, so there's other languages in Alaska. It also goes through Canada um, and down to the lower 48 to Washington, Oregon, California. Um, shout out there in those states, Arizona, New Mexico, um, Navajo and Apache. Whenever we get together, we're always sharing our languages. Um, compare it, not only the words, but also the verbs. Okay. I've sang to the crane. <laughs> <laughs> they, so um, she had asked if I sang to the robin. And um, um, no, I haven't sang to it. I've sang to the crane, but um, maybe if we start singing to the robin, maybe it'll learn its song back. Good idea. Okay. All right. Well, I do a coming tonight and also to the Facebook audience and to Sarah and Steve there for um, all of your support. And once again, it's just um, been a pleasure. Kind of lifted me up. I was feeling so sad and nice to talk about birds and they're coming back and if you get a chance to show the crane video show that they are coming back i don't know if steve can manage that i'll try and pop oh okay before everybody goes but oh. i wanted to say thank you again i got you oh. some flowers oh thank you we bassie really appreciate you oh bassie yeah thank you very nice pink flowers aha uh aha -huh, uh -huh. So I was in um, Nebraska, and if they get a chance, they'll show you. Um, it's a flyway for many cranes and eagles and seagulls. Um, I mean, not seagulls, uh, swans. And so we'll see if we can load up that little video if you just want to get a taste of what's to come. So my husband and I were in Nebraska. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, 
just uh, two weeks ago. Keep the people in Nebraska in your prayers as they had a, it started flooding the day that we went to this um, sanctuary. Five miles past it, the levee had broke and they told us not to go up that road. It's amazing to see all the birds when they're coming back. Okay, with that, I thank you. Gee, I talked a lot. <laughs>